Hi, and welcome to day five of our environmental data science class. Today, we're going to go over our markdown real quick. And we're going to use the same Heyman Fire NDVI trace um, repository that we've been using. So you're just going to open that project. And instead of creating a new script this time, we're going to create, we'll go up to File, and we're going to do New File. And here there's, you see our script, which is what we have been doing. Instead, we're going to do an R markdown. And we'll give it a label, which will be NDVI trace and Heyman fire. And we want the output to be in HTML, and the author is me. And every time you create an R markdown, you'll, it'll start with this little starter document. Um, and the first thing I always do when I open the starter document is I hit Control S because I want to save it. And so this is what I will label as the um, NDVI trace. And that's just saving directly in this, the sort of scripts that we've been working on. So what you'll see when you open an R markdown is um, this top level information here that I've highlighted, where you have a title, then you have an author, you have the date, and then you have the output type that is preferred. And if you click knit this button up here, what it's going to do is run all the individual codes and in code that is in here, and then it's going to output this text as just readable text. So if you saw in the bottom right over here, when I clicked knit, it generated this document. And I can go ahead and view that in a web browser. And here you can see this is what this looked like. So this is the title that we declared. This is the author. This is the date. And then we have um, that this is in our Markdown document. That's just a header. And then we write some text. And then these are just example code. And you, but you can, you can include code output and you can include plots. And real quick, I just want to show sort of what this might look like if we converted our old analysis. So this NDVI trace. Um, NDVI over time document where we had chunks of code into an R markdown report. So currently if we run this code, it sort of just like plots a bunch of output. So if I just control all and then run all this code, in the bottom right here it's just going to be changing some outputs and we can scroll through these different plots and sort of look at the different uh, ways we've thought about it. But in an R markdown document, those would all be se sequential, which is a sort of easier way to think about this. So let's go ahead and start walking through how you do that. Um, first, you, ha you have this high level sort of document that I already discussed, and then, then you have this setup chunk. And um, what this is, this setup chunk is typically where you load all your packages. So if we just go over to our NWI over time um, code, we're gonna go ahead and reload all of our packages in here. And you also set up the behavior of the, um, our markdown document. So this is saying, Hey, I want the package called Knitter. Knitter is the package that allows you to, to, to make our markdown documents. I want it to say, I want the options in each of these code chunks, which are highlighted in gray, and start and stop with these three tick marks. These are not quotes, these are ticks. Um, and I want the echo to equals true. And echo just means, do you want the code to be visible as an output or not? And so here we want the code to be visible. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete their text and I'm going to say Heyman fire. So then I'll say in 2002 there was a large fire in central Colorado. Colorado. This analysis is meant to highlight how the fire altered vegetation in the area. And so that this is just sort of where you would write text and you can imagine in a report to your colleagues or to your to your advisor you can write out exactly sort of the motivation for each analysis so here we can label this uh, data read in so this will just be the code where we read in the data and we'll leave this sort of just we'll just directly copy this and now we have a way of sort of talking about the data set and we can even use these um, pound signs and what that sets up is different layer levels of um, basically like this is header two this is would be header three and so we can say data read 
and then I'll say first we have to read in the NDVI data, which is structured to compare unburned versus burned sites in the Hayman region. And so now we have this data read section and, and a little definer of what the code is actually doing. So we can sort of blend descriptions of code with the direct code itself. And then here, um, th we the next step we do is the conversion. So we'll do um, tidying. So we're going to tidy the data in this code chunk. Next, we clean the data a little. Uh, I'm going to keep the uh, echo equals true here, which is the default. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to say tidy. So we're tidying up our data. And here I'm just going to go ahead and copy this any of you over time where I convert the data from wide to long. And we already discussed how this code works. So um, that should be clear. And then basically, if I want to sort of start running code in these different chunks, uh, there's some helper things over here on the right um, where if you can sort of trace my mouse, this little arrow with the bottom equal signs just runs everything upstream. So it says run all chunks above. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what it did is it ran all the library read in and it also ran all of this data reading in. And, and then now we're at the point where we can run code in this chunk. And we can run code in a chunk by running this little arrow. And so now we have these data objects on the right. So we have NDVI long, et cetera. Um, and just to show you, I think I had some preloaded already. Now we have this one called NDVI. And then if I run this, we'll get another one called NDVI long. Um, here we have, now we want to sort of generate a plot. And we might want to describe what this plot does. So here we're just saying that this is plotting all the data. Um, so we want to plot all that data, but we've sort of run out of chunks that were already in there. So we want to say plot of NDVI over time. And we want to just go ahead and say plot all, because this is going to be all the data. And inside, we want to just paste that data that we, that code that we just copied. Um, and But how did I make this chunk? Well, there's two ways to make a new chunk. One, a chunk is where you put the code, which is again, these triple ticks. It starts with the triple tick marks and ends with the triple tick marks. One way you can do it is go um, up here to insert, sort of, if you can track the mouse, it goes up here to insert, and then you can insert R. Um, and then you can sort of put all this data in here. I usually just use Control, Control Alt I, and that inserts an R chunk. Um, and so once you do that, you have this ability to put code in and then run that code. So we'll run everything upstream, and then we'll run that code again. Oh, something broke, which is usually useful. Let's ask what the names are. The names look right to me. Oh, I had deleted somehow the plus sign. So I just need to add that back in. And now you can see the output over here on the right. You may have uh, the output be inline, and you can change that by saying that you want chunk output in console, or you can do chunk output inline. That'll just mean that the plot would plot up right here. I prefer it in the console area, so um, you, know, you can change that setting if you want. Um, and then, you know, basically we can keep doing this and you can see that as you add complexity, you can keep adding descriptions to the point where at the very end of a very long R Markdown document, you could actually write an entire paper or a full report. Um, and then, you know, that you could have descriptive text in line with your code and in line with your figures. So uh, NDVI greenness after the fire dramatically decreased and stayed low for at least 17 years. And then now that we have our report ready, we can go ahead and click knit. And now in the files, we're going to have this new HTML file, which is going to be the knitted document that we just made. 
And now we can see here's the code, here's the sort of warnings that come with the code, here's more code of how I, I changed the structure of the code, and then here's the plotting code, and ultimately here's the plot. And so this from now on is how we'll be working with, and we'll go over a lot more sort of details of how to um, use sort of tidyverse and R Markdown together to make really uh, beautiful reports. And just before I go, I'm going to go ahead and commit all this to our branch. Uh, I've also created an assignment for today, so that'll be committed. And I updated the git ignore so that y'all can't see the answers to the assignment. And I'll just try to make this, I'll say added assignment one and an example of R markdown coding. And then I'll click commit, close, push. And now it's online. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in class soon.